Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. We're here for you each and every day. One of the things I want to kick off with is, is to talk about something I think is on the forefront of a lot of people now, and it's stem cell therapy. It's something that is has been it's been researched for 20 years, but now it's more in the mainstream, and it's something that we're seeing a lot more in in mainstream practice. And stem cells, there's two different types. You've got mesenchymal stem cells and embryonic stem cells. Now, the embryonic are the ones that were kind of banned. That research and, and ability to, to use that in the U.S. was banned. President Bush jumped in and said, you know, we're not going to do that. He didn't want anybody playing God. And so I think it's a kind of a cool thing. I agree with him. But the embryonic stem cells were the ones that everybody got in a big uproar about, right, with ethics. But there's another kind of stem cells that helps to rebuild and repair. We say repair and regenerate tissue. And it's called the mesenchymal stem cells. These little guys can go in there and they can rebuild things like cartilage. They can take a torn uh, tissue and help regenerate it. There has been uh, some studies that have been shown and research that have been shown that it potentially can help repair and regenerate lungs that are damaged, like with COPD. They're finding that people have seen great results with with the pancreas, such as in diabetes. So there's a lot of promise with stem cells. And pain is another big one. So you start talking about pain of joints, spinal issues with degeneration of spinal joints, muscles, all of these kind of things. When you start seeing that, that's uh, pretty amazing. Okay, so we're starting to see, even in the in the clinics that, that have been around, we have seen amazing, with our lifestyle providers, results with stem cell therapy. All right, so what, this is just a simple example, okay? Somebody has, maybe take somebody that's in their 60s or 70s, and they've got complete degeneration in the knee. If you look on the the film, look on x-ray and MRI, you're going to see a joint space that's almost what they call bone-on-bone. Bone. You ever hear people talk about that, having bone-on-bone? Bone? Well, and that's when they start talking about knee replacement, which is a huge surgery. It's, it's just, it's, it's massive. Matter of fact, most surgeons will want you to watch some form of video and educational format just to understand what you're undergoing with a complete knee replacement because it is a big deal. All right. Now, what's interesting, though, is that stem cell therapy, stem cells can give you life back to a joint that's been torn down because it actually uses your own cells, your own stem cells to go back in and it's re-injected. So the stem cells are taken out of the body, usually in the bone marrow or the fat tissue in the body, the adipose tissue, as we call it. It's then processed and then what we call spun down and, and there's a process to it. And then it's re-injected into the troubled area. Stem cells go in and help to repair and regenerate. So with cartilage, they can help rebuild cartilage. Muscle repairs muscle tissue and can give life. So there was a 65, 70-year-old man in one of our lifestyle provider locations that, that had almost, it was pretty much bone on bone. And within a four to six month period, almost had a quarter inch regrowth in the joint space and went back to not just normal activity, but superseded his activity into, I mean, levels that when he was in his thirties and forties, is that real? It's real. And is it happening? Yes. And they've been doing it in Europe for a long time. It's not like it's some brand new discovery. It's just been the United States and, and been what they call FDA cleared over, say, the last five years or so. So you're starting to see a lot of these pop up and, and a lot of people doing really well with them. So stem cell therapy is, is something that you, I think, is a real viable option for people. Do your research and find places that you can go to and get good information about it. Talk to doctors that are trained in it, that understand it and, and use it and have been using it in clinical practice. But it's amazing. It really is. And it's something that, that you should look at for a variety of reasons because it just brings health. I mean, it is, it is a future called regenerative medicine. It's a field. But I really believe it's a huge future in medicine that gives people back quality of life. And that's really what we're about. On this show, and really in the style of of what I like to teach, is what type of health care can give people higher quality of life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all need, right? 
We want to thrive. We want to live well. We want to have good energy. We want to have good relationships. And we want to have every, we want to be able to squeeze everything we can out of every day. And if you have low energy, you feel terrible, you ache and you hurt, then life is just not that much fun. So we want to figure out ways to give you a higher quality of life. That's what we do here on the show, and that's what matters. Stem cell therapy is pretty amazing. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call. Go to the website. Let's get on the phones and talk to Tommy. Hi, Tommy. I have no cartilage on the outside of each knee. Other than knee replacement, I'm wondering what would be a good, appropriate solution, temporary solution for this. I think that, I think exactly what I'm talking about, stem cell therapy. I think it's a perfect option. And, and again, if you need help with that, just let us know and get you somebody that can give you a consultation and just help you. There's a lot of great clinics around the country right now that are doing it. But stem cell therapy is fantastic because you can, you can do things like Halogen, okay? There's hyaluronic acid. You can inject it. It's been approved by Medicare and all that for a long time. But hyaluronic acid is a natural substance. I like it. Okay. I really do. I'm a a fan of it. I think it works great, but it's temporary. It will go in and create cushioning inside of a joint like a knee, but it, it, it wears off in six months. You know, it's not something that goes in and repairs the tissue. The thing about stem cells is that when you use stem cells, it goes in and will actually repair and regenerate and rebuild the tissue. And when you do something like that, it just, it's a game changer. When you go in and repair and regenerate the tissue, it is an absolute game changer for what we're talking about. And so with, with you having, when you say you have no cartilage, let me tell you something, you've got a little bit of cartilage on both sides, right? And so all the body needs stem cell wise is to be able to go in and lock in into those areas and it can really repair and rebuild. And that's the ultimate key. You get in and get the body to do that that's you're you're off and running and and literally it may take now here's the thing 90 days to six months before you start even seeing anything so that's the one thing with stem cells like if you get a treatment done it's not like tomorrow you're going to feel amazing it's it's going to take some time however those effects are lasting and the worst case scenario about stem cells is this people say well is it going to hurt me well that's the great thing about it because a bad surgery can make things worse right So if you get a surgery that's botched up, then that can really create a lot of challenges for you and your health. But the great thing about stem cell is that you're either going to get better or nothing's going to happen. So they'll either work or they won't. And so you just have to kind of understand that. But the good news, what I love about it is it's it's (laughs) hope-filled. It gives you an amazing opportunity to have a higher quality of life. And it's not expensive. Really, it's not. I mean, the, the prices and all that, it's out of pocket. Insurance does not cover it, okay? For the most part, they haven't yet. We hope they will. But it's pretty amazing, and it's, it's very inexpensive compared to surgery. And it's a great option for a better quality of life. 888 We'll be right back. Hi, this is Dr. Ray said to talk to you about the world's best protein for longevity called Best Amino. Protein is essential for every cell in your body to function at its absolute best. Best Amino is the highest absorbable protein, more than meat, eggs, and dairy, which may only absorb at 50, 60, or 70%. Best Amino is a proven formula of essential proteins that we all need that absorbs at 99%. Visit bestamino.com. That's bestamino.com. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at mchapenetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Check us out on the web. We're here for you each and every day to take you from where you are in your current state of health to where you need to be. Lifestyle is the medicine. It is. I think the way you think is is probably some of the best medicine. So, But lifestyle plays a big role in that. So depression is something that, you know, it's the number one prescribed medication right now is depression meds. Number one. Why is that? Live in America. Live in a place where you can pretty much, for the most part, do what you want. Okay. Got every opportunity in the world. 
if you just apply yourself, if you have the right mindset, yet we have more depression in our country than anywhere else. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. I think that I think our thinking is off. I think that self-esteem is an all-time low. I think that understanding our capabilities and our abilities, I think that's a big part of it, and not realizing that, that we are designed for more, not realizing that, that there's so much more we can do if we apply ourselves. And if we realize, you first you've got to understand who you are and, and what your talents are and what your your greatest giftings are. And that's a whole different conversation, but that that's a big piece of it, I think. And I think that poor eating habits, I think poor dietary habits lead to severe depression. We see that in the studies. We see that in in a lot of it. Of course, life, right, can cause it. Just life situations and circumstances. But what about as we age? One thing that, that's interesting is that as we age, depression is definitely not a part of the aging process. It's a medical condition, so don't think if somebody gets older they get depressed. So depression in older adults or anyone can be a serious illness. Doesn't matter if you're 25 or 95; it's still serious. But it affects about seven million of the 39 million adults older than 65 in the U.S. plays a, a big role. It's a misdiagnosis often too. So the older adults can mask the depression by complaining of a physical problem, so it's harder to diagnose. According to the National Institutes of Mental Health, typical signs of depression in the elderly, sleep issues, which is too little or too much sleep, decreased pleasure and interest in previously enjoyed activities, decreased energy or concentration, an increase or decrease in appetite, feelings of hopelessness or helplessness, thoughts of death or suicide, and self-destructive and suicidal behavior. So the older adults are more likely to die by suicide, they say. One out of every 100,000 people aged 75 and older are in that category. So you just have to keep an eye out. So a person who's physically ill and not getting any better often has underlying depression. So medicine can help. Psychotherapy can help. Or a combination of both can really be effective in treating that depression. So you can help prevent depression by staying active and by being connected to other people through family and community activities, senior groups, or religious affiliation. All of that can make a, a real big difference in, in how you feel. But depression, it can. It can strike anyone, and it can hit them. So you really you always want to keep an eye on it. If you've seen those symptoms in somebody you love, you care about, and you want to jump on it, get them the help they need, get them to somebody that can help, counselor, if it's if it's real severe, get them to a physician so they can potentially seek treatment if if needed. Because it's not depression is not normal, okay. And once your once your daily activities become affected by it, that's when it becomes uh, something that's that warrants getting some kind of work like that done. Really have to get it looked at. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or. Go to the website. Get over to the phones and talk to Jake. Hi, Jake. Uh, I want to know if you, uh, green tea and peppermint tea, do it really help? Well, yeah, green tea is 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 really good. Peppermint tea is okay. I, I'm not a big fan. of uh, Peppermint tea is good. It's good for a mental lift, but there's been some studies that have shown that peppermint tea can lower testosterone. See, for a guy, it's kind of catch-22, right? Because you're doing everything you can to ma- maintain good, healthy testosterone levels, but if you're hammering down the peppermint tea, then you got a chance of of lowering the tea levels. That's something you don't want to do, right? That needs to be moving. <laughs> that stuff needs to be working, and we need to get that as as high as we can because the healthy testosterone levels actually. And there's disagreements in this, okay, in healthcare. But there's there's different schools of thought, and some schools of thought say that you need to lower testosterone. To avoid prostate issues, other schools of thought say if you get too low in the testosterone, it can affect and cause prostate issues. I love the example I heard a a urologist talk about at a conference, and he said, when you think about prostate health, you, you think about a young person, when like a guy, a male in his twenties, where his testosterone numbers. So just so you know, it goes from like zero to let's just say twelve hundred on the scale. When you're in your 
teenage years, 18 to 25, you're probably running about 900 on the testosterone scale. When you get into your 30s and 40s, you're probably hitting about 750. And then when you get into your, say, 50s and 60s, you're probably getting down around four to 500. So it slowly declines. But, I mean, a lot of people try to keep a guy that's had prostate cancer around 150. I mean, just bottom of the barrel. But if you realize that, the, the guy, the urologist said, he goes, how many, how many kids, how many young guys that were in 18 to 25 had prostate cancer when their testosterone was running 900? None. So we don't get into trouble until the testosterone levels really start to drop. And so there's a lot of debate on that. My point is, is that peppermint tea can drop it. Green tea is great. It can actually support healthy testosterone levels. But it's actually really good for a lot of different things. Green tea's got like a 65% reduction across the board of all cancers. So it's just got tremendous benefits to overall health. I'm a big green tea guy. I'm a huge fan of it. Promote it. Um, use them. I'm a big fan. We use it in our coaching systems. And I teach about it all the time. So it's something I use on a regular basis. But green tea is great for health. I think it's one of the best things. If you're going to drink water, you might as well stick a green tea bag in it. <laughs> That's my thought. Green tea's just got so many health benefits. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. So much coming up. We're going to be talking about your health anti-aging principles and what to do to turn back the clock when we come back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book, for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. We're here for you each and every day. Whether you're absolutely thriving or challenged in a hospital bed, don't you ever give up. Don't give up. The one thing we have every single day is we have hope. And if you lose your hope, you're going to lose everything. Hope is the key. Hope is what tells you that you can make it. Hope is what tells you that you can go to the next level. Hope is what tells you you can get out of that bed. Hope is what tells you that it's not over. Hope is what tells you that just because your dad died at 55 doesn't mean you are. Hope is what tells you that even though life can be tough, that there's a better day coming. That's what hope is. So in health care, just like life care, you can't lose hope. It is the key that will pull you through every single time, every single day. And that's the truth. 888-283-7272. If you're a senior, which we've got a lot of seniors now, and you have diabetes, the fracture risk is really high. So if you're at increased risk for fractures, then usually over the age of 65, type 2 diabetes, you're going to have a higher risk of fracture. And... One of the things you can do to avoid that is get a test done by your physician, and they can check on your vitamin D levels. Now, vitamin D is a real key for increasing bone density and avoiding fractures. And vitamin D, not only is it it powerful in what it does, but also you've got to look at vitamin K2, and the vitamin K2 is what helps to absorb the vitamin D. You really want to take those two together. It makes a tremendous difference in your overall health. I would have that checked out for sure. It can make a big difference. So get testing done, a blood test, by the way, with your physician and have them take a look at it because vitamin D levels usually run really low. Matter of fact, at the age of 50, we lose our ability to to utilize vitamin D. So really have to get in and see a difference on that. Vitamin D plays a big, big role. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. You can give us a call. If you haven't found a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes just like we do, you can go to the website and find a lifestyle provider in your area or just give us a call at 888-283-7272. But sometimes we just need someone to take us by the hand, right? We have providers in different areas 
that can help you. And really, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with diabetes or heart disease, arthritis, fibromyalgia, if you've got weight issues you want to work on, you really want to get yourself back in shape and into a better place, and we can help. I'll tell you, some of the big ones, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, these are some of the big ones that, that just begin to crack the surface when things start breaking down. That's what you have to look at. So getting the body to balance is is a major key for that. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Let's get on over to Francine. Hi, Francine. I don't know exactly what goes on with me. I, I may not have anything wrong with me. I don't know. I could have a stomach issue. I could be lactose intolerant. I don't really know what goes on with my body. I'm 26 years old, and I just want to know how can I – what am I doing wrong? Like, I do eat – I love salads, and I, I do eat my greens. Um, maybe not as much as the healthy, healthy food, but I do try to eat meats and stuff. And I and just don't understand when I'm going wrong. I get real bad, painful stomach cramps. And it's really painful to the fact where if I have to go to the hospital sometimes and I just really would like some help to figure out what's going on with me. I just, I don't feel like I'm eating enough or maybe I just feel like I'm underweight and I just really need some help. I'm 26 years old again and I feel like I really want that help to be eating healthy like everybody else and I want to stay as young as I can possible. Well, number one, is you're young. I mean, you're 26, okay? The good thing about that is, is that when you start having issues, especially digestive issues, that early, it's usually something, well, it's a combination, okay? Because the the gut and the brain are connected. So usually there's, there's something happening between both of those. There's what we call a gut-brain connection. So either there's a lot of Pin up emotional stress that you don't they don't realize is there. Maybe it's from the past. Maybe it never got dealt with. Whatever, and it could be a combination of just poor eating habits, things that you just don't realize. Like you may think granola bars are healthy, or you may think that that eating a lot of bread is okay. And maybe your body just doesn't. Maybe it doesn't handle it that well, and it it converts that into making low energy levels and digestive related conditions. Right? If you drink a lot of milk and your body doesn't process milk well, there's a there's a protein in milk called casein, and some people just don't break it down well. It's no big deal. It just Some people just don't need to drink milk or, or have any kind of dairy products. So it's figuring that out. It's not that you're – you are very young, and sometimes when you're young, you don't feel good. You feel old, <laughs> right? So that's something that can easily happen. But one thing I can tell you is is to make sure I, – I would get to see – I would go see – a GI doctor, gastroenterologist, and you can get, you may have to get a, a referral from your primary care doctor, whatever. I would have them look at it, okay? Just just have a look. I'm a big specialist guy. I think they're, I think they're important. But I'd get your GI doc and, and just have them talk with you and, and get some testing done, make sure everything's clear. And if they say everything's clear, if they don't work with you on your diet, and some don't, some just, they just do what they do and they don't get into all that. That's okay, but I would I would definitely get with someone that can really focus on building a an anti-inflammatory based diet that will have the different tools in it to kind of balance out your system, and they can help cut down the inflammation, but also get you to a place where it can work better. So these symptoms you're having can be indicative of a lot of different things. But you just need somebody that can take you by the hand and and walk you through it. I mean that's that's really the biggest piece. Because we're having having different health issues issues like that and being so young can be frustrating. But I'll tell you, that digestive issues are one of the number one set of issues that people struggle with. Brain issues and digestive are are some of the big ones. So I would have a GI doc take a look at it and then let us know. Okay, triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three. 7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or go to the website. Now, sleeping is a big deal. Did you know that? Now, I've changed my tune on that. Matter of fact, the research has said for so long, seven to nine hours of sleep is good. But we found some other situations about sleep. 
So actually sleeping too long past nine hours can increase your risk for stroke. And that's not good. And sleeping too little, say under five hours, can start shutting down your hormone system. That's not good. So there's a sweet spot between about six and eight hours that is really the best for optimal health. And the one thing about sleep is you can't really catch up on it. You know, we always say, well, I'll catch up on the weekend. You don't ever catch up on sleep. Once that night's passed, once that day's passed, you've missed it. And the reason sleep's important for a lot of reasons, but one is that it dumps out toxins. It resets the system. It allows the cells to recover and regenerate at a good level. So that's one of the things. You've got to get into a good sleep schedule and a good sleep pattern to really have optimal health. I think it's one of the big ones. So there's three key areas if you want to get healthy and you want to get fit. I think number one is nutrition, but without a shadow of a doubt. If your nutrition's not right, you're not going to have optimal health. It's just impossible. Number two is recovery. Your recovery of the daily life stressors, your recovery of your if you exercise a lot, you're an athlete, or if there's a lot of stress at work and you sit a lot, you've got to have some kind of recovery method for your body. And then your exercise is third. Have to get it. I don't care how much you work. I don't care if you're a factory worker. doesn't matter. I don't care if you think gardening is working out. Let me tell you something right now. Gardening is not exercise. Gardening is sitting on your knees and pulling weeds or whatever you're doing. And don't get all offended, but it's not exercise. Okay, you got to get out and you got to move and you got to sweat. And it doesn't matter if you're 85 and you say, well, I'm, I'm too old. No, you're not. If you're, if you're telling yourself you're too old, I see people 35 saying they're too old. So it's just more of a mindset with what you do. But those three areas are going to be the biggest key. But your sleep patterns are important. And I would develop a routine, number one. Got to get on a sleep schedule. Doesn't matter if you go to bed every night at 10 or 11. You want to start cutting the lights out. That's a big one. All right, cut cut the lights out. If you want to reset your clock, you want to start cutting the lights down around 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And I wouldn't do any blue light. I wouldn't do any screens. Don't do them in bed. Don't get on your phone in bed and start looking through everything. You want to get through with all that, any kind of computers, it's called blue light that comes from the screen. Now, they've got a, a, a blue light cutoff on your phone you can do. And if you have to be on your phone, that's a good option. I would put that option on, though, around 7 o'clock at night so that what your mind or what your eyes are looking at will really begin to shut that down. Because it does. It makes a big difference overall. And when you start cutting out the blue light and you get into a good sleep pattern and you structure yourself in a way, you're going to increase your overall health. And when it comes to sleep, it's one of the biggest keys. I mean, they're finding now that if your sleep patterns are disrupted continually, it can lead toward Parkinson's disease. It can lead toward dementia. It can lead toward cognitive breakdown. So it's a big part. And I say that a lot of times if you can't get someone's sleep right as a doctor and you're working with them clinically, I don't think you can get a lot right. I think the sleep pattern has to come in first and get corrected before everything else. And if you can get the sleep dialed in, then you can really win the battle. That's where the battle is, is the challenge is, is with sleep issues like that. So we want to help you any way we can. We will. I've got articles on that, by the way, in detail on the website. 888-283-7272. It's 888-283-7272. More questions about your health when we come back. Hi, this is Dr. Ray said to talk to you about the world's best protein for longevity called Best Amino. Protein is essential for every cell in your body to function at its absolute best. Best Amino is the highest absorbable protein more than meat, eggs, and dairy, which may only absorb at 50, 60, or 70%. Best Amino is a proven formula of essential proteins that we all need that absorbs at 99%. Visit bestamino.com. That's bestamino.com. On call radio and watch on call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. We're on call for you each and every day. Here for you. No matter what you're struggling with, remember, if the body can get sick, you can also get well. Lifestyle is the medicine. So the choices we make every single day, you know what? It matters. Our choices matter. So whatever you do, 
with your health. doesn't matter, okay, as far as your outcome is going to be dependent on your choices. You eat healthy every single day, guess what? You're going to have good health. You exercise, you're going to be fit, you're going to be trim, you're going to have good health. You don't, you won't. So it's it's one of those things where you have to make the right choices every single day. And, and on this show, we want to help you do that. Let's get on the phones and go with Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Are there any nuts which are good for you if you're having GABA issues? Probably have fructose malabsorption, if not fr- uh, hereditary fructose intolerance, and numerous food allergies and chemical sensitivities. Yeah, with all that going on, uh, the, the nuts you want to stay clear of, if you have GABA issues and you want to keep your GABA levels up, really it's it's almonds, Brazil nuts, and walnuts. I mean, those are all great nuts too, right? So they're really good. But it, those are the ones uh, that really tend to be, that can affect GABA levels in a negative way. It doesn't mean don't ever eat them, but it just means if you hit them, if you eat them a lot on a regular basis, and that's a big part of your diet, probably want to get more variety. One of the great nuts that I like are macadamia nuts. They they really are uh, in more of a, in a general sense, they don't affect a lot of areas negatively. They're really great for our hormones. Our hormones are very supported by macadamia nuts. It's a monounsaturated oil. It's very, very similar to the same kind of fat that's in avocados. So it's really, really good for maintaining healthy testosterone levels in men and good progesterone estrogen balance in women. So those are really good sources. But if you deal with with GABA issues, you want to stay away from wheat products too, though. It's not just nuts. Wheat is a big one. So any kind of like gluten-based foods, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, all that can make a big difference if you deal with GABA issues. And, of course, GABA is the main brain chemical for anxiety. So if somebody struggles with anxiety, they have low GABA levels. And that's that's one of the big issues. So GABA is a, is a real a real key. But your foods can make a big difference. Now, foods that can help GABA levels are fish, except salmon, unfortunately. Salmon, one that can trigger it. You want to stay away from spinach. You want to stay away from a lot of the beans. Although chickpeas are good. So a lot of those different foods can, can make a big, big difference in your GABA levels. And then sugar, of course. I mean, all the junk foods are given. Don't even touch that. But you can create better balance. I've got a whole listing of that. If you go to the website, I've got articles on this where we talk about the different brain foods and what can help different areas. So like acetylcholine, which has to do with cognition and memory, or serotonin, which has to do with feeling good, dopamine, which is that feel-good brain chemical. That's the one. Those are the ones you can look at and really see a good overall game plan. All right, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. What about our kids today? We all think that maybe kids grow up too fast. We always talk about that when they're when they're little. But they're finding now that in some ways a trend tends to be that U.S. teenagers are maturing a lot slower than in past generations. So high school kids today are less likely to be drinking or having sex, they say, versus their counterparts in the 80s and the 90s. But they're also less likely to go on dates, have a part-time job, or drive. Traditional milestones along the path to adulthood that we've seen are slowing down. So it's the slower development. Is it good or is it bad? We've kind of you know, go back and forth with it, but it may depend on how you look at it, the researchers said. According to life history, a theory that they've had in, in a lot of the psychology, neither fast nor slow development is inherently good or bad. It just depends. So there's a lot of trade-offs on each path, they say. Uh, twinge, which is a, a gene twinge, which is a professor of psychology at San Diego State University, said the upside of slower development is that teens aren't growing up before they're ready. I tend to agree with that. But the downside is they go to college and into the workplace with, without as much experience, with not as much independence. So that can be a challenge, too. So I think that if you ask any college professor, they'll tell you that students these days are woefully unprepared in basic life skills. But, you know, again, it's not to say that teens should be rushing into adulthood. And I think that that happened a lot, definitely in the 80s and 90s, since the time period that I, I grew up and was, was in that age bracket. And I can just see a handful of people that I grew up around, some that had to grow up super, super fast due to their family situations, and some that didn't. So I think there's definitely a balance between the two. But they found that by early 2010, high school seniors were online for an average of 11 hours per week, but pointed out that patterns seen in the study began before widespread Internet use. So the Internet has played a big role 
too in in a lot of the the slowdown of what's been going on. So again, patterns. When you start looking at health, mental health is a big piece of that, and development to get somebody. So if they're struggling with anything, doesn't matter if it's if it's diabetes or heart disease or blood pressure, or if it's just you know something as simple as is maturity. It comes down to the way we think. It comes down to the people that are influencing in our lives. It comes down to the people that are making an impact and really teaching those kind of core principles. And our health is determined by our choices. So no one can take responsibility more for your health than you. And if we're talking about young people, then parents, that's a responsibility that, that we have to make an impact and to really leave an example and lead by example to them. So I think that there's there's a lot of differences that, that need to be looked at. But it's interesting because they say they don't know that it's good or bad in something like this. They don't know that if they that really if the, if the development, slower development, is really good or bad. I think it really comes down to the individual person and the family and where they're headed. So that's what I would look at. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. We've got Jeff in Phoenix, Arizona. This is what do I need to do to increase testosterone? Well, Jeff, to increase testosterone levels, one of the big things you've got to do is get your lab testing done with saliva. You need help with that. You've got to figure out how much the body is actually producing of the hormone. That's the key first. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, G.J. Allen, our executive engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends our families, and our communities. You listen to the show, it helps you get well, stay you can well. Listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.